Hi, I'm Brent. Today we've got part two of our video update. You will remember on our part one video, this is the engine that's the WRX with the uh, closed deck block EJ257. It's not an STI um, assembly, it's a WRX. And we've now assembled it together with the, um, the heads, the block assembly, which you can look in our previous videos. And what we're going to talk about today is some of the ancillary components of what we're putting on this engine. And we'll just refresh our memory. This was the engine that had uh, head gasket problems, the, pre the owner with the previous workshop, he had lost confidence with the way the engine was running, wasn't delivering the power he wanted. Um, he does drive the car pretty hard. Um, it's in a um, current model, or it's in a WRX, it's not an FA series engine, an EJ series engine. And the owner openly admits that he does drive the car hard, but he wanted to make sure that when it goes back together, he's gonna have something that gives him peace of mind. Hence the overkill in the design spec of the engine where he was absolutely adamant we had to go close deck to give him maximum reliability with his head gaskets. So that's all put back together. So let's talk about the parts that we bolt onto this engine now that it's going back together. Um, it's got the very popular Blausch turbo, uh, pretty popular upgrade these times. Original factory mounted position. Inlet comes through here. Um, exhaust manifold comes from underneath with a set of extractors up in the up pipe and then of course down through the back of the turbo compressor. Now this particular car has got a um, remote wastegate so the integral wastegate on the Blash Turbo has been welded shut. Previously this engine had the similar turbo with a different exhaust housing on it so to give him the power target he's wanting we've gone for a slightly larger exhaust housing so that's why it all looks nice and new because it's not rusty anymore. So what we're going to do, I'm going to show you what goes back together. Now one thing I want to show you, now this is, um, there's, these days lots of different air intake designs that fit the um, turbo assemblies. And this particular one is a Mishimoto one. Unfortunately someone previously when they're building the engine has been a little bit um, brutal and you can see things are falling apart. But if you have a look closely here, someone's damaged the silicon hose and it's split. So we're not going to reuse this one. Um, that'll just go back there. For spare parts but that's where it sits because the air intakes over here inlet manifold sits on the top which is the manifold over here and we'll talk about this manifold in a second how it all fits and what the throttle body location is different on this engine compared to previous models but you'll see the different type of intake pipe that we're going to use this one will fit on here it's got um, different fittings in different locations got a slightly different design on the way the air box air hose connects this car running a, um, I think it's running a modified air intake as well. And of course, sits underneath the inlet manifold. So let's just talk about the inlet manifold itself. So I'll get this part here, because effectively when it's on the engine, this part will sit in like that. Turbos at the back, air intakes at the front. Now on the manifold, you see it's got some nice new shiny bits. And these are the risers that replace the tumble generator valves which are factory standard and you'll see up inside here it's just a nice straight bore it's a CNC machine fitting really a uh, good airflow and when you're chasing those incremental increases in power and performance these are things that you need to focus on and what we're going to show you here is what it's replaced now that is the TGVs tumble generator valves and you can see what happens is it's effectively an old school choke so depending on when the car is in cold start because it only uses this component on the cold start mode to get the car um, up and running when it's cold um, and it starts the car off like that the engine control unit then once the car has gone through a warm up mode will open that up and then you're left with the butterfly in the middle and this in the centre. Now what happens is you can grind all this out and dig it all out but these days it's a lot cheaper to buy one of those but if you're looking for something to save a little bit of money you can pull the shaft out, pull the choke out itself and then grind out the aluminium and put it all back together. But what I wanted to show you is this is the way the um, engine control unit control runs it. And if you look inside here, there's a little tiny um, gear drive, which is driven by the servo motor. And that part inside there is what the um, engine control unit uses to open and close the butterflies. And if you ever got these apart, make sure when you put them back together, that you put them in the right position because the motor doesn't know where its location is and all it just assumes is it's in the right location for its default setting. Now some of the, on this model, the later model Subarus, the location sensor position is built into the device, the motor assembly on here. But on the earlier model um, Subaru engine, you can see the choke's a little bit different. Um, if you have a look at those, you can see how much different Subarus change the chokes over time. This is the early model one, this is the current, well, before the FA series engine. 
Um, and you'll also notice it's got the sensor on the end. Now inside here actually, there's a spring loaded device. So if you pull that off, they'll spring open in one direction and not the other. But if you put that back together in the wrong way, of course it won't then work properly again. And you can ultimately, I've seen engines rebuilt by some people where one choke is closed and one choke is open. Um, and obviously not the best thing for when you're trying to tune your car. So this is the inlet manifold. I want to show you what it looks like on the back side. Now this is the part where the firewall is. Now if you've got a standard Subaru with the WRX plastic inlet take manifold, you'll notice the electronic throttle body is now tucked down underneath here. The this STI throttle body sits here on the aluminium inlet manifold. The previous earlier model WRX had a similar location electronic throttle body, but Subaru have changed the design with the plastic manifold and put the throttle body up underneath here. Of course the intercooler, air intake through the uh, throttle body, up into the engine, uh, manifold and then down into the individual combustion chambers. Now this part here I wanted to touch on is a common fault and you'll see some of our previous model, previous videos, factory uh, connector hose here often will pop off and you get a boost leak. Very very hard to see because when this manifold's in place there's not a lot of room to see and look down into back here. So if you're looking for something to try and diagnose or look in a way to make your package a little bit more reliable, replace this plastic um, the original factory fiber reinforced pressure hose between the intercooler and the throttle body with an aftermarket silicon one. So there you have it. This is all going to go back together. I'll just show you without setting it on. Manifold goes back on top here and we'll bolt it all back in place. We'll put the, um, we'll put the uh, assembly back together, get it back in the car, run it up on the dyno, give you another video update soon for part three, but for now I think that's enough. If you've got any other technical questions, make a comment at the bottom of this video. I hope this has helped you no matter wherever you are in the world. But for today, I'm Brett Middleton. Thanks for watching.